How was it? Am I surprised to you? Your best friend's bride-to-be is none other than your ex-wife. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Are you so surprised you can't even speak? My name is Shuichi Kaji, 26 years old. I was invited to my best friend's wedding and I walked into the most chaotic scene where the bride turned out to be my ex-wife. The story begins about two years ago. Yuko, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. In the good times and the hard times, I want you to be the one by my side. Please, will you marry me? Yes, of course. I succeeded in the most important moment of my life, the proposal, and now I had a fiance by the name of Yuko. Yuko was two years younger than me and I was introduced to her by a mutual friend. At the proposal, we went to meet both of our parents and we were given both of their blessings and jumped right into preparing for the wedding. We booked a venue, sent out the invitations, and decided on both of our outfits. We went to file our marriage certificates first, and all we had left to do was to enjoy the day of our wedding ceremony. However, just a few days before the wedding, when I woke up in the morning, my wife Yuko was nowhere to be found. I thought that maybe she'd gone to the grocery store or out shopping, but when I looked down at the living room table, my dazed self instantly woke up. I panicked, and I tried to contact my wife, but this, what is this about? Explain it to me! What is there to explain? It's exactly what it looks like. There's only one reason for divorce papers that are already filled out. But it's barely been any time since we submitted our marriage certificates. You know that our wedding is in just a few days. Who cares? You were deceiving me all this time, weren't you? Yesterday, I just so happened to accidentally look at your salary pay slips. Only $1,400 a month? What is that supposed to mean? I told you already, didn't I? The company's business has been in a dangerous position lately, so my salary was decreased. But I'm one of the luckier ones, since at least I haven't lost my job yet. Even then? $1,400 a month? That's like $15,000 a year, more or less. And who would want to get married to that? Are you crazy? It's just that my income is lower right now, but I can just change jobs. After the wedding, there are plenty of other options to figure out. After seeing such a pathetic invoice, you have no stance to convince me. You were in a specialized field, and your salary seemed pretty high, so I was looking forward to it. I can't believe you were a lowly employee with an annual income of $15,000. Listen, just come back home, please. I have a lot of plans myself, so I want to explain those to you. No offense, but there's no turning back now. I can't marry you. Goodbye. Hey, come on. This is way too one-sided. You haven't even given me a chance. Just please pick up. Before I could explain anything to my wife, I was given no choice but to be divorced and left. I said this earlier, but this happened just a few days before my wedding. After that, Yuko disappeared and I had no way to get in touch with her. Thanks to that, I had to pay all my cancellation fees to the venue myself, and I was stuck going around to every single guest we had in invited to apologize. Apparently her parents also didn't know where she went, and they just kept on apologizing to me. I mean, I knew that it wasn't the right thing to complain to them about it. I was actually just given a sum of cash from them to help with the cancellation fees of the wedding. Her parents were decent people, but what on earth happened to the daughter? <sighs> but there was no use thinking about that now. There was only one truth right in front of me, that my married life only lasted a few short months before it was gone. I was traumatized and left with a bitter feeling, and for a while I would freeze anytime I heard the words marriage marriage, wedding, or wedding dress. I would get depressed just from seeing any glance at a bridal magazine, and I really suffered. That was about a year and a half ago, and I was really busy with work, and I finally stopped to think about Yuko. There was a part of me that was determined to increase my salary that she trashed so much that day. Then, one day, a friend that I hadn't spoken to in years reached out to me. Yo, it's been a while. How've you been? It really has been a long time. You're already back? Yeah, just about three months ago. In that case, you should have messaged me sooner. Regardless, I haven't heard a peep from you over the last two years. Well, I was going around places with really bad phone reception this whole time. Can you believe it? If I wanted to get in touch with anyone, I would have to use a satellite phone or write a letter. That's crazy. You must have a lot of stories to tell. Sure do. I could tuck your ear off all day and night with stories. <laughs> but if you're back now, does that mean that you're finally ready to settle down? I guess so. I've already found a house to live in, and I decided to help with my dad's business. <sighs> you of all people, choosing such a steady path, did something happen to you to change your heart. Actually, about six months ago, during my travels, I met this girl who was on vacation. Well, that's a very romantic way to meet someone. We hit it off immediately, and, well, you know, we did what we did. And then three months ago, when I got back to Japan, we reunited. That's great. Did you guys start dating after that? Yeah, and just the other day, I actually proposed to her. Whoa, that took a turn way too fast. To be honest, I felt like it was fate. We've actually already submitted our marriage certificate, too. If you're happy with that, then I'm happy for you. And we're planning on 
having the wedding in three months. That was another quick turn. Of course you'll come, right? And you'll stay from the ceremony until after the party, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, by the way, what's the name of the soulmate of yours? Her name is Yuko. This loose, nonchalant guy's name is Takafumi Shimoka. We've known each other since high school, and I guess you could say that he's my best friend. With that being said, just like I mentioned in our messages, we haven't spoken in nearly two years. That's because as soon as he graduated from college, he became a backpacker. He was traveling around the world, so it was hard to get a hold of him, and we had become somewhat distant. That's why he probably doesn't know that I was married, but it wasn't really something for me to bring up now, either. Now, right after he's come back to Japan, he's telling me that he's going to have a wedding. Even though he was traveling around the world as a broke backpacker, the reason why he can put together such a decent ceremony is because he is the son and future heir to a major company. I imagine he already has his job lined up at his father's company, and that his dad is probably paying for the wedding, too. After graduating college, he spent a few years without any worries as a backpacker, and straight after that, he's getting a job at a major company. I'm honestly jealous of his privileged life, but despite my envy, at the end of the day, he was still my best friend that I cared about. Of course, I was planning on being genuinely happy for him, however, apparently his fiance's name was Yuko. Well, it's a common name, so what are the chances, but... Please give a warm welcome to the bride and groom! Oh man, I wonder what a beautiful bride he had- WHAT?! I was eagerly awaiting the entrance of the two of them when I raised my voice in complete shock. I couldn't believe it, but the bride standing next to my best friend really was my own ex-bride. She was there, Yuko, walking down the aisle with a beaming face. I was so shocked that I sat there with my jaw on the floor. Did Yuko know that I was coming? Before that, did Takafumi invite me knowing that my bride was my ex-wife? What on earth is going on? So many thoughts and questions were circling my mind. As the ceremony finished and we transitioned to the reception, I was stuck in a daze the whole time. The after party rolled around and I wanted to go home, but I already said that I would be there, so I felt obliged to attend. I hate this about myself, but I'm sure that they had already made the reservation, including me, and canceling would just be an inconvenience to the restaurant as well. I was waiting for a good moment that I would be able to excuse myself, but then... Suichi, long time no see! Uh, yeah, it has been. My ex-wife was a little tipsy and came over to talk to me. Hey now, hey now, are you sure you want to be doing this? Not to mention you're the main character today. However, my ex-wife continued talking without care. I mean, what a surprise that Takafumi was a friend of yours. The world is a small place, isn't it? <laughs> Please, anyone, someone come and save me and get her away from me. Yuko didn't have a single ounce of shame. I didn't know what to do either, and all I could do was just force an awkward smile. Up until this moment, I had no intention of bringing up the bride's past on her wedding day. If anything, it was all in my past too, and I wanted to forget it, and I was going to take Yuko's horrible actions to my grave. But instead, Yuko was grinning from ear to ear with a nasty smile on her face as she kept talking to me. Seriously? I knew I made the right choice leaving you back then. Otherwise, I never would have been able to get the seat of the future CEO's wives like this. Uh-huh, is that so? How are you these days? Still a lowly employee? What was that annual salary again? $15,000? Your future is so dark, I might need a flashlight. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. When someone is this clueless, it starts to become pathetic. I was tired of it. When this time, Takafumi came over. How was it? My surprise to you? Your best friend's bride-to-be is none other than your ex-wife. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Are you so surprised you can't even speak? Turns out that Takafumi also knew and still invited me. That being said, in his case, at least I knew that he didn't have any bad intentions. Ever since college, he's always been trying to be the life of the party, and he would often get carried away in the momentum. His whole life was basically just one big party. Even after he graduated college, he still didn't have any working experience in the real world either. I'm sure his childish and playful nature hasn't changed yet. <sighs> There's nothing I can do. How you feeling? Is it awkward? I yeah, I guess. <laughs> Why don't we go and announce it to everyone? Hey everyone, everyone, listen up! There was that bad momentum escalating, and as soon as all the attendees had their attention on us, You idiot! All of a sudden, a man came from the side and sent Takafumi flying with one fist. Dad, what the hell, Dad? That's right, this was Takafumi's dad, Mr. Hirokazu, aka the head of a major company. No! 
I am so, so sorry about my idiot son! Mr. Hidokazu looked mortified as he hung his head and apologized to me. I glanced over at Takafumi and Yuko, who looked lost. The head of the major company was bowing his head down to me, Takafumi's friend. So the two of them must have been very confused. Uh, please, don't worry about it. We all know what alcohol does to people. Plus, I already know Takafumi's personality well. I am truly so sorry. Hey, you two! I've been listening to the two of you the whole time. How dare you act with such little shame and terrible manners! Why are you so mad? Shut up! What you guys are doing right now is going to result in millions of losses for us! Uh-huh! What? What is going on? Hey, Suichi, you better explain this! <sighs> what a perfect pairing of two idiots. Actually, ever since I was an employee at my old company, I'd started my own business of developing apps. About one year ago, I was doing well enough that I could focus on that full time. All that hard work paid off, and the app that I launched was quite a huge success. In my first year, I was able to earn quite the revenue already. My company just so happened to catch the eye of Mr. Hirokazu, and a few months ago, his company acquired my company. Of course, it was a great deal to me, and I was very happy to sell my company to them. By leaving the sales and operations of my app to Mr. Hirokazu, Kazu's company, it was almost certain that we would see millions in profits. That's what he was talking about. If these two pissed me off enough, there was a possibility that I would take back the acquisition of my company. That's because there were plenty of other major companies that were wanting to acquire my company. And so, the after party of the wedding ended with the groom being slapped by his father. The next day after this big incident, I got a message from Takafumi. Hey, how did things end up like this? I just thought it was funny, that's why I did that. You know what, why don't you try putting yourself in my shoes? After my ex-wife left me in a distance, tasteful way she's getting married to my friend? How can you find that funny when I honestly felt like I wanted to die? Yeah, after that I got quite the earful from my dad too. Well then, before you come crying to me, isn't there something you want to say? I'm really, really sorry, and I know this doesn't make up for it, but I'll help you out with your work. Huh? I'll lend you my hand and help out with your work, so... Just be honest, your dad was furious with you and no longer offered you a job. And how did you know? I mean, I'm working very closely with your father's company, plus my company is about to be your dad's very soon. That's why I can't hire you. But if you just hire me now before that, it'll be fine, come on! Even if that were the case, I can't hire you. Why not? Are you even capable of developing apps? I'm not, but... Can you account for any administrative work? I can't. That's what I'm saying, you don't have any work experience. Before you suck up to others, you need to work hard yourself first. Don't be so cold. Come on, you and I are best friends. I'm telling you this because you're my best friend. If you're going to keep on relying on other people at that age, all that lies ahead of you is destruction. You need to learn how harsh the real world is and what it's like to be independent. Then you can come talk to me and I promise I won't shut the door on you. All right, I get it. Thanks for not leaving me behind, Shuichi. Sure, good luck. You and your wife should support each other, okay? I'm sure it's not going to be an easy road ahead for Takafumi, but... At least he apologized and was willing to change. Plus, apparently, the two of them are still moving forward with their married life. As the main pillar of his new family, his real battle was only just beginning. However, as for Yuko, she came directly to my place and... Hey, I've been thinking about it and... I think that you and I can start over. Why don't you and I go somewhere where we can talk about it together? Alone. Without even apologizing, she was actually coming on to me. I can't believe I couldn't see through her nature and tried to actually marry her. I'm the real idiot here. Hurry up and get lost, you thick-headed heartless bitch. And more importantly, you got married to Takafumi, didn't you, huh? I... I'm going to break up with that useless, brainless loser anyway! <laughs> no thank you. I never even wanted to look at a gold digger like you, who can only judge men based on their salary. Hey! That's taking it too far, but I loved you! You've got some nerve. If you loved me, then why didn't you root for my success? Why didn't you support me by my side? Why didn't you think that maybe you could get a job so we can be happy together? When I said that, Yuko bit her lip and fell silent. When I looked over at her face, it had dissatisfaction and unconvinced written all over it. She obviously wants to do the bare minimum in life. She just wants to have the best in life, enjoy her life, and have fun without ever having to lift a finger. She's a little girl. I mean, a gold digger. She only sees butterflies and flowers in her mind. Her merits were that she looked somewhat pretty and that she's really good at pretending to be innocent, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The older she gets and as those merits only start to dwindle, she'll probably finally understand the harshness of reality. That's not gonna be my problem though. I have absolutely no intention of having any relationship with you. You're lucky I won't tell Takafumi or Mr. Hirokazu about this, but if you ever show up here again, I'm going to call the police. So I kicked her out. After that, Takafumi started to work part-time at a subcontract 
Ventures construction company, and while being pushed by his junior and senior colleagues, I hear he's working hard. Mr. Hirokazu says that he's got a long way to go and he is strict on him, but I can tell that he's proud to see his son sweating and earning his place. However, there's no way that he can live any sort of luxury like that. The two of them are living in a tiny rundown apartment and barely scraping by. Even then, apparently Yuko didn't even try to find a job and their fights become unbearable. Despite his circumstances, Takafumi hasn't once come to me begging for a job again, but I can only imagine how emotionally stressed he is. And as two friends and two guys who are both deceived by this gold digger, sometimes we go out for drinks together. I did a really awful thing to you. All I heard from Yuko was that she wanted to pull a little prank on her ex-boyfriend, and yet I had no idea that a few days before your wedding she'd cancelled everything and then disappeared and left you, along with all the responsibilities. If I'd known that, I never would have married her. We don't need to talk about that anymore. But the two of you are married now, so I guess you gotta find a way to make it work, huh? Uh, about that. What Takafumi proceeded to do was exactly what a gold digger like her would do. She started going into bars and clubs pretending to be single and having affairs with men who seemed rich. Mr. Hirokazu's secretary was the one who got proof of that. Apparently, ever since the day of the wedding, Mr. Hirokazu was suspicious of Yuko, and he had asked various sources for background checks and an investigation. Just two months after they got married, the two of them were divorced. Because they had evidence of Yuko's affairs, Takafumi was able to sue her for a large settlement. On top of that, while they were married, apparently Yuko was mentally and emotionally abusive to Takafumi, calling him useless and blaming him for her lack of wealth. And because of that, they were able to add more to the settlement. Yuko was forced in court to pay it all at once, so she had no choice but to take out a loan from consumer finances. Under Mr. Hitokazu's watch, she was given hard labor jobs. That would be physically difficult for anyone, and she's slaving away while she pays back the loan little by little. She's tried to get away multiple times, but was caught each time and dragged back, and the beauty that she was so proud of is nowhere to be seen anymore. After the divorce, Takafumi apparently went to see Yuko just once, and according to him, he said that she looked like a real zombie. Shuichi! Yo, Takafumi! How are you? How's it going? It's great! Your app is a huge hit, even around the world! Takafumi kept on working hard since then, and eventually earned a full-time position at the construction company. It turns out that during his time as a backpacker overseas, he was able to learn a few languages and had developed great communication skills. Mr. Hirokazu had recognized that and was planning on making him the head of the international sales, but after the incident with Yuko, he put those plans on hold. That's why now, years later, I recruited him into my company and put him in charge of the international markets. His loose, nonchalant days almost seemed like a different person, as he dives headfirst into his work every day and is now one of my most reliable partners. I was impressed that when a person wanted to start over and put in enough of an effort, they can really have a fresh start. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't! You idiot! No matter how many years pass, you're still so loud and always complaining! I'm gonna punish you again! Yeah! help me! Suichi! What was that? Did you get a cold? You gotta take care of yourself, boss! I told you to stop calling me boss. Well then, let's get going to our next meeting. Yes, sir!